Rolling. Five, four, three. We share the world with seven billion people, and regardless of our desire for solitude, we encounter a wide range of people every single day. And most of the time, we're the chameleon, like a face in the crowd, and which has its perks. Yeah, but sometimes, attracting. Yeah, pause. Pause. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're a runaway train. <laughs> <laughs> she's hopping away because she's trying to speed her way through. The very important thing here is pace. Right? You have to be able to enunciate, deliver, pause between sentences. Right? Pace is way too quick. We're trying to rush this, right? So just be conscious that she's not racing her way through to catch up to you, so make sure you listen. Okay? Slow the pace down, enunciate. Right now you get the nervous body language. <laughs> body language here, what she's using is the Are you recording? Just, no, no, you just have to. Power pose. Rolling. Pumps, are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Two, one. Two, one. We live in a world with 7 billion people, and regardless of our desire for solitude, we encounter a wide range of people every single day. And most of the time, we're like a chameleon, a face in the crowd, which has its perks, but sometimes it's necessary to stand out and being a butterfly is equally important, especially in a social event or networking event where being remembered is simply not easy, especially when everyone is competing for the exact same goal. Leaving First, a good first impression is a no-brainer, but I think we should take it one step forward and go with leaving a memorable impression. Research and observation is essential for us to be able to establish a personal relationship and distinguish yourself from the crowd. An example of, for this has happened to me around two years ago when I was sitting in the medical clinic studying for my psychology exam, ignoring the world, hoping no one comes bothers me. But unfortunately, well I guess fortunately, an old man came by and sat down and engaged me in conversation. What he was talking about? To be honest, I don't remember. It has been two years. But there was one very important thing that I do remember. And that is who he was. And, a, and one little interesting fact was able to mash all of that together. He was a retired um, university professor at Waterloo teaching math. And he was telling me all about how one of the first computers it, at the school was taking up the whole floor of MC, one of the buildings at the University of Waterloo. With this, I might not remember what I got for my midterms or anything else that day, but that was Im important because catching a person's attention is not easy. Maintaining it is even harder. Having a unique and dis distinguishable feature is, not, is hard to develop and is a unique skill and opinion that can drag us there. For shy people like me, it might not be as easy and it's slightly uncomfortable, so sometimes a unique accessory can go a long way as well. It's probably safe to say that most people have, will forget the content of my speech by tomorrow, or unfortunately for my criti critics, who will be trying to stress on what I need to improve. But hopefully, you'll remember me for one important thing, my memorable element, that annoying purple bow on the top of my head. And thank you. I hope this will change me from being in the face of the crowd to showing you who I really am. Cut. Rolling. Speed. Speed. Five. Four. Every student walking in these halls is here at Seneca for a reason. We're here so that when we graduate, we can find a career. And our public relations, public speaking class is no different. In preparing our interviews, we're told we need to prepare an elevator speech. And we should, we're told we need to prepare why employers should hire us and what makes us special. Today, we'll hear these speeches that are written in only 272 words. But first, we have a speech on one why, one why, one student. Pause. Pause. Rolling. Speed. 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 Sorry. Is it rolling or speed? Speed. Oh, I'm used to rolling. Sorry. Five. Four. Every student walking in these halls is here at Seneca for a reason. We're here so that when we, are, when we graduate, we can find a career. And our public speaking corporate communications class is no different. In preparing our interviews, we're told we need to prepare an elevator speech. And we we're told we should know why employers should hire us and what makes us special. Today, we'll hear these speeches that are written in only 272 words. But first, we have a speech on one why. 
one student believes her mental health is her most important health. Jude will tell you a story of how eight months changed the course of her life and how seconds of silence seemed to sound so scary. Swoosh, the waves were crashing and how she missed that sound. Jude. Cut. Yeah, she's supposed to say roll. No, you say roll camera. Oh, roll camera? And <laughs> Okay. Like many other students, Alexandra is eager to get into the industry and really create a name for herself. After graduating from the University of Guelph Humber with a journalism degree, she found herself with a strong interest in public relations, which has led her to where she is now. With a passion for the arts as well as the entertainment and fashion, she's hoping to really make a splash. Rangini has wander feet and wants her job to take her around the world. She loves learning new languages and cultures. Rangini believes in developing additional assets to the job requisites. Her speech is on why she should get hired. Keisha Chapman bears no relation to the wealthy Chapmans who founded an ice cream empire in Canada. She knows because when her tuition was due, she checked. Despite being pained persistently by poverty, Keisha has her humor, which has helped. The question of why you should hire me has struck terror into the hearts of job seekers everywhere for generations, as it struck fear into Keisha's heart today. You can credit her fearless go-get-it attitude, go get it attitude that she has the gumption to make such a speech today, and that bravery is just one of the first reasons why you, nameless employer, should hire her. Cut. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. You're, you're on camera cut, right? Cut. Okay, go ahead. Want me to cut? So recording? Now, a bit more body language. Right now, you're you're okay. you're locking your hands. Okay. Right? And you're just trying to get through it. Okay. Okay? Which means I don't believe you. Okay. Ali okay. Henwood has always felt that trying to stand out from the crowd can be difficult. And and that trying to get hired in PR especially can be very competitive. She's a twin, so she knows what it is not to always stand out when you're when you want to. Her speech is going to be centered on trying to get hired when it's hard to stand out from the crowd and why you should hire her. Sometimes that person sometimes that per, the person that isn't drastically different from everyone else will zoom in their will zoom their way into becoming an accomplished practitioner. And they didn't need to volunteer or work in PR since they were 16 to do it. Gifty has a bachelor's degree in food science. She is very reserved and enjoys her own space. You would need to hire her because she's not impulsive, thinks on her feet, makes sure every detail has been done well. Her life experiences have taught her, have taught her actions speak louder than words, and she would rather perform than speak. Woo woo, D, D is a delightful. Sorry. You may want to take that again. Yes. And you should move your head a little bit. Right now you're locked in. Okay. <laughs> right? Okay. So this is where you're going to move your head back and forth a little bit. Okay. In a square pattern. Okay. Just nice and slow. Woo woo. Dee is delightful and she will be giving her speech on how delightful you will be to have her a part of your company. Yeah. We're skipping her. Next up we have Carlton Communications grad Brandon Nelvert. We're who is here to tell you why you should hire him in his speech titled, Why I Am the Number One Draft Pick. Disha, previously a print media journalist and student at the University of Delhi in India. She's currently communications professional in the making. Her speech is titled, Work in Progress. And that concludes our speeches for today. Thank you for coming today. Okay, we're gonna one last kick at the end. Okay. okay keep rolling, All right? This is where you need a little bit more body Thank you. right? Okay, just loosen up a little bit. Right now you're stiff. 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 Okay. Loosen up. Okay. Right now you're hanging on for dear life. Okay. One more kick at the end. Stand by. Five, four. And that concludes our speeches for today. Thank you for coming out today. All right. Good job. Seen. Five, four. After eight months at sea, away from my life, I entered my apartment and the silence was deafening. It was so loud I could barely stand it. The ringing in my ears didn't stop for months. I didn't sleep for weeks. And when I tried, it was on the couch with constant music or movies on repeat because that was more familiar. That was more comfortable. Your physical health deteriorates. You sleep on a cot about 
this big in a tiny compartment that's no more than 16 degrees warm. With no more than five hours of sleep each night, being jolted awake with the firing of automatic weapon systems every few hours and constant machinery noise in the background. Physically, you're broken, and then goes your mind. I took for granted constants in my life until they were absent. I took for granted the sound of the ocean until it wasn't there. I didn't appreciate the healthy mind I had until it got sick. No one talks about how an environment can slowly deteriorate your mind without you noticing. Your mind becomes the frog in the pot of water. When you slowly turn the heat up, the frog stays put until it dies without a struggle, without ever noticing it. Recognition. Two medals and one more en route. A number of awards, a number of decorations for my uniform so my coworkers can see what I've done. And they automatically want to hear the fun stories. How many pirates did we capture? How much cocaine have we seized? And of course, they want to know about all the fun parties in foreign ports. And we did all those things. But we also missed birthdays, we missed anniversaries, holidays, and so much more. Join the Navy, they said. See the world. What the, nobody tells you is you could lose your mind. Speed? Five, four. After eight months at sea, away from my life, I, was, I entered my apartment and the silence was deafening. It was so loud I could barely stand it. The ringing in my ears didn't stop for months. I didn't sleep for weeks either. And when I tried, it was on the couch with constant music or movies playing in the background on repeat because that was more familiar. That was more comfortable. Your physical health deteriorates and you, you sleep on a cot this big in a tiny compartment that's no more than 16 degrees warm. With no more than five hours of sleep each night, being jolted awake by the firing of automatic weapon systems every few hours and constant machinery noise in the background. Physically, you're broken, and then goes your mind. I took for granted the constants in my life that were absent. I took for granted the constant sound of the ocean until it wasn't there. I didn't appreciate my healthy mind until it got sick. No one talks about how an environment can slowly destroy your mind without you even noticing. Your mind becomes the frog in the pot of water. When you slowly turn up the heat, the frog stays put until it dies without a struggle or without even knowing it. Recognition. Two medals and one more en route. My coworkers see this and automatically they want to hear all the fun stories. How many pirates did we capture? How much cocaine did we seize? What were the parties like in foreign ports? And we did all those things, and they were all cool. But we also missed birthdays, we missed anniversaries, we missed holidays, we missed so much more. Join the Navy, they said. See the world. But nobody tells you that you could lose your mind. Awesome. Speed. Five. Four, three. I know what you're thinking. You're sick and tired of all these angsty, entitled millennials applying for jobs on the heels of reports and surveys that show millennials job hop, they hate their bosses and spend all their free time on LinkedIn and Monster looking for a come up. Kids these days. Well, let me introduce myself. My name's Keisha and I'm old. But we more mature folks know that with absolute certainty that that sort of flip-flopping costs the company money. Hiring is an investment and you can't just up and leave every time you hear something that you don't like. They don't have any resilience, that's for sure. This generation could have never made it through the war. See, that's one of the best things that comes with age. Dexterity, not flexibility. And when you're as old as I am, you have it in spades. Not to mention adaptability. All these youngins have to offer is their social media, tweeting and Instagramming. But what is that really? 
Do you really want someone at your company whose primary skill is expressing themselves in 140 characters? Remember the good old days when we wrote letters? Well, I still utilize that dying art form. I remember books, reading those things. Trust me, I can get through five, six of those in a week. What I'm trying to tell you is that my old age is an asset to your company. I'll bet you don't hear that often, but it's true. We don't leave jobs. This is a fact. The only threat I pose to, your, to you is your pension scheme. Hire me, because experience matters. Yeah. Like many of us, of us here, I am extremely eager to get on with my life in terms of my educational career. We've all been in school for quite some time now and are constantly left with the thought, I wonder what I'm going to do when school is done. Get a job, travel, start a family, the list goes on. But I know for myself, getting into the workplace and gaining that hands-on experience is what is most important to me. Ever since I was little, I dreamed about a career in the communications field. Many thought this was ideal for me since I was outgoing and extremely talkative. But as the years went by and my studies continued, I was able to narrow down my career path to public relations. Having a journalism degree from the University of Guelph Humber is still something that I'm very proud of. I learned many useful skills and tools that I've already applied during my time here at Seneca at York in the public relations program. I've also been fortunate enough to work with the PR and CSR team at Loblaws a few summers ago. This experience taught me a lot about the industry and the skills required as I was basically thrown in the deep end on my first day, but I loved it. Being in a busy, crazy, and non-stop atmosphere is something that works for me. I can see myself in this industry because I have a great sense of time management and ensure that all of my work is done to the best of my abilities with dedication, commitment, and creativity. Speed. Five, four, three. My name is Ali Hanwood and I am an identical twin which means that my sister and I look a lot alike. And growing up, having a twin was awesome, but it had its drawbacks as well. And while our friends could tell us apart, to many other people, we were the Henwood twins. And oftentimes, people did not know which one I was. And this could be kind of discouraging if you were talking to someone for a while and realized that they didn't actually know who you were. But moving on to my main point, trying to find a job in public relations these days reminds me an awful lot of those days sometimes, and that it feels like nobody truly notices me or knows who I am. In other words, everyone feels like my identical twin. Um, I'd like to explain on that a little bit more. Every job that I look at, it feels like their job um, uh, description wants their ideal candidate to have all of these experiences and qualifications and skills which makes sense but oftentimes I feel like there is just no way that I will ever make a splash and get hired when I read about some of these opportunities it really makes me wish that I had been preparing for this since I was 16 but unfortunately that is not the case I'm here to tell you that it is okay to not have five years of public relations experience at the age of 22 or whatever your age might be I know at this point in my career, which is the very beginning, that my resume is not all that impressive. In fact, it's not the best to look at right now. But sometimes the best candidates don't have the lengthiest and the most impressive resumes, and we may not have any working public relations experience at all yet. But I promise you that if you were to hire me, that I would work just as hard as anyone else, if not more, because I am passionate and I am determined to do the job well. I did not always know that I wanted to be in public relations, but I do know that now, and I am determined to make my mark, to stand out, and to have everyone know that I am Allie Henwood. So if you are hiring, take a chance on someone like me, and I promise you will not be disappointed. Awesome. Five, four, three. To hire or fire, that is the question. I love what you offer, but do you love what I offer? Hi, I'm Ranjani. I know the news and the newsmakers. I worked on the other side of public relations and trained as a public relations specialist now. But I do have something to offer apart from this as well. Are you looking for a business expansion in countries where the Canadian loony has a great exchange value and new emerging markets? Are you looking for great human resources at better costs? Or are you unhappy with your existing offshore resources? 
I speak six foreign languages mostly spoken in emerging markets. I know communication cultures in those countries and urgent to learn new cultures. Do you have a culturally diverse workforce and you're struggling to keep everyone on the same page? I can communicate with diverse internal publics and motivate, create, sense of belongingness and multiply productivity in your organization. So are you hiring me? I sat down on Friday night thinking about what I should talk about for the speech next week. We have always been told what to do with our lives and speeches. David said, by every passing week, topics will become more difficult and advanced. And by the end of sixth week, he wanted us to talk about anything we want to, which looks simple and great, but it's difficult. In a mail, he mentioned that this is a great opportunity to sell yourself and I didn't come this far to do that. <laughs> but, in, but seriously, talking about ourselves is one difficult task, which is interesting. Firstly, I opened my resume, tried to list out and speak of some of my jobs from my first internship to the management level, job of, to my business. Adding those skills, trust me, it is impressive. But that's my career, a very small part of my being. It made me advanced on a monetary level and very little on a personal level. I have been in this class for almost six months now and people barely know me, which speaks volumes for me as a person, which is self-explanatory that I'm an introvert, but I'm not. Socially selective, yes. I see many people being friends and competing at the same time. I don't do that, not because I'm any less competitive, but work for me, is a part of me. It doesn't define me, neither my personality nor my ambition. As a kid, when people asked me about my ambition, work or profession was never a part of it. I always wanted to read, write, dance, and be adventurous. I wanted to grow, which I did. I do, and I will continue to do that. And that makes me. What I, when I starve to save money for a trip, that defines my passion. When I gifted people my baked goodies worth several grants for free just because I wanted to practice more, that spoke of my seriousness. I learned many dance forms from classical Indian to jazz to belly dance for more than eight years. With that came my creativity and when, when life gave me enough stress, I learned patience and acceptance from practicing and mastering the art of yoga. I am yet to achieve many career goals and put my education to use. But personally, I know I will forever be jack of all trades and master of none. That's what I wanted for myself, to be a work in progress. Hello, prospective employers. Welcome to the D. Hewan Show. Today's special is all about me. And I'll tell you why I'm a great employee. With so many individuals applying for the position of public relation practitioner in your organization, how would you be able to choose or decide who's the most awesome? Well, with the help of coffee, anything is possible. I am exceptionally motivated, capable, creative, and goal-orientated individual with a willingness to learn. My experiences as a commissioner for the York Federation of Students, I was responsible for contributing to the production of events such as York Fest, Multicultural Week, and more, campaigns and equity issues. I work well in a team environment, however, I am able to lead when it is needed for a great turnout of events. I am energetic, organized, and dri driven to achieve positive outcomes. In the midst of social media, it is a force to be reckoned with, from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Yelp, blogs, and vlogs. The challenging aspects of these platforms are exhilarating, yet informative with the information that it provides. David O. said, if you can't advertise yourself, what hope you have to be able to advertise anything else? I trade words for money. After the extensive public relation corporate communication program, I will be able to help your business get the message across. Through clever taglines and 
that are precise and concise. My service will always help present your message in the slickest, most memorable way possible. I will be able to make a positive contribution to the family and look forward to hearing from you. I am the jelly to your peanut butter. Hayden pets from age 10 after being chased and bitten by my family's dog. It surprises my family and friends the love I have found for London. Two months ago, my cousin bought London from my friend. Memories of my childhood flooded my mind and made me resist all contact with her. After two weeks, I built a relationship with her and helped my cousin train her to eat and to sit, to pee and pull outside. My heart grew fond of her and pictures of her flooded my snap stories. With time, we had an understanding and she listened and obeyed everything I told her. Truth is, she made me feel like a mom over the vacation. I fed her and sang her lullabies to sleep. I rubbed her belly every morning. London accepted our morning greeting, laid on her back, and always had her pee of excitement when I got out of my room. She would weep when I go out without her till I get back, and have her pee of joy again when she saw me walk through the door. The night... We're sagging. We're sagging. Back up. I fed her and sang her lullabies to sleep. I rubbed her belly every morning. London accepted our morning greeting, laid on her back and always had her pee of joy when I got out of my room. She would weep when I go out without her till I get back and gave her pee of joy when she saw me walk through the door. The night London left with my cousin to New Brunswick, I cried so much. I didn't realize how emotionally attached I was to her till she left. My brief relationship with London taught me responsibility and sacrificing for what I love. Being passion-driven and detail-oriented, it reflected in my care for London. She taught me that trying new things wasn't that bad, and all you needed to do is put your heart to it, and you will succeed. Can't wait to see her in April, though. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I may not be the most qualified person for this job because I don't know the other applicants. But what I can tell you is that through my education in my work experience, I've developed the skills that are necessary for a career in public relations. When I graduated from Carleton University with my communications degree, I still had this dream of working for TSN, becoming the next Bob McKenzie or Darren Dreger. But my path instead took me to IDEX, where I got my first opportunity of working in an office environment. This first grown-up type job gave me the experience of managing different social media accounts, updating their website, and writing internal and external documents. Working there made me realize that no longer was it my dream to work for TSN. No, my dream was now to have a career in public relations. Working for IDEX showed me everything that everything public relations is, is what I want to be doing. As I've grown over the years, one thing that has never changed was that I always want what I wanted my career to entail is a fast-paced work environment where my job is a blend of a little bit of everything, of where my skills and strengths can be best utilized, where I'll get the chance to write, to plan, to organize, and to research, where let's call it a jack-of-all-trades persona will not only allow me to allow, will not only help me, but also the organization succeed. I may not be the most experienced, but I am well-suited for a career in public relations, and that's what I believe I should be the first pick in the draft. <laughs> 